Hello everyone. Thank you very much for coming to our presentation today. My name is Koja Mamoto of Cybernet Systems and uh, I am delighted to be here to talk to you about our solution. Today, I'd like to present a case study on the identification of material properties by reverse engineering. Inverse identification is achieved by matching the results of the analysis with actual measurements, but it is not wise to repeat the analysis by try and error. The combination of AI and virtual material testing enables an efficient reverse analysis. We have worked with the of the several times in the past to introduce our solution for virtual material testing. So today we will not go into too much detail about the, the ind individual features of the product. Instead, I will focus on a slightly more applied topic that is coupling material database and AI. This is the agenda of the presentation. I will firstly introduce about overview and the background of the needs to perform virtual material testing for material design. We emphasize that our multi-scale solution has a good compatibility with material informatics. Case studies using big material data are then presented. A first case is a sensitivity analysis on the strength of UD composites. The analysis will reveal the effect of variations in the microstructural components on the macroscopic strengths. This analysis is also the example that motivates the next use cases. Namely, the strength of UD composites strongly depends on the strength of the material interface. This means that when prediction the strength of composites based on the analysis, the input values for the material interface strengths must be highly reliable. The purpose of the second use case is to identify the strengths at the material interface. The use cases in this presentation are limited and may not be the same as the challenges you have. However, I hope you will listen to the end of the presentation as I believe the same approach could be applied to your application as well. So let's move on to the first topic. I will give a background and overview of our solution to perform virtual material testing. Let me give you a brief introduction to materials informatics, which is an important keyword for today's topic. Generally speaking, there have been four major paradigm shifts in the history of industrialization. It was in the second paradigm that theoretical calculation began to be used in big way. At this point, calculators had not been appeared yet. So the analysis objects were extremely simplified and could only be examined in the level of detail that would allow hand calculations. And the third paradigm is numerical computation, which is corresponds to the basic solution our product provides. Based on FE models of microstructures, their equivalent material properties are predicted based on homogenization method. Finally, there is a technology which is designed based on data science. This is a method to obtain the knowledge necessary for manufacturing based on existing data. Materials informatics is the application of this concept to material design. To achieve this, three technologies are known to be important, which are artificial intelligence for getting new insight from data, large amount of material data to train its artificial intelligence, and HPC to get the data in short time. Among them, today's presentation will focus on creating the large amount of material data. I introduce about our original technology to perform virtual material tests in easy way. The tool name is multiskill.stem. This is an add-in product to ANSYS Workbench. It provides various functions necessary to perform virtual material tests and obtain material properties. This analysis can be broadly divided into four main phases. Our solution provides functionality for all of these phases. The first step is to create the microstructure model of the composites. The microstructures are often too complex so that it is not practical to create the model manually. Multiskill.sim provides templates to automatically create the model based on the geometrical information of the microstructures. The model is used as a test specimen to perform a virtual material test using the finite element method. The boundary conditions for conducting virtual material tests based on the initial model are very complex, so we provide the ability to create those boundary conditions automatically. 
This makes it easy to perform material tests in any deformation modes. The outputs of the analysis are macroscopic material responses and material constants. Material constants can be identified by our original curve fitting algorithm. And this has a similar function, but it does not support anisotropic properties. So we provide a more general curve fitting function. The material database is built by repeating these processes while changing the conditions. This process is done by existing functions of ANSYS. Although the obtained material data can be managed in any format, it is the most efficient to manage it in Granta because we also provide an interface to Granta MI. This is a wall picture for this. If the purpose of the analysis is limited to structural analysis using implicit method, the ANSYS Workbench platform consists of three main approaches. It is space claim, design modular, and mechanical. These three applications provide customization toolkits for developing Arduins. Multiscale sim is developed by using it. This means that model creation and all other analysis settings can be handled using the user-friendly ANSYS GUI. In addition, the matrix solver required to run the analysis is from ANSYS. So the analysis performance is almost the same as the standard ANSYS functions. The set of material information obtained by these features will be output as an external file, which is compatible with GrantMI. The data can be imported into the GrantMI server. The data required in Granta can not only be referenced, but can also be imported back into ANSYS Workbench. In other words, it is easy to use the material data in Granta and analyze it in ANSYS as well. Design Explorer is used when the conditions are changed and the analysis is repeated based on the design of experiments. Not only that, obtained results can also be used to search for optimum values or create response surfaces using AI. By making good use of this, we believe that materials informatics can be realized. Okay, so I will now present examples of analysis where a big material database has been constructed by means of virtual material testing and utilize it. The first is an analysis of sensitivity assessment. The target is a unidirectional fiber reinforced composite, which is said UD composite for short. The material is reinforced by fibers aligned in the one direction with resin as a matrix. The aim of this analysis is to investigate the influence of factors with variations within the microstructure on the apparent young modulus and the strength of UD composites. This figure illustrates the overall flow of the analysis. Composites are well known to be prone to variations in their properties. The main cause of this is due to variations within the microstructure. An example is the material properties of resin. It is extremely difficult to strictly control the properties of resins as they change depending on the molding history. Fiber orientation is also expected to change during the molding process. UD composites have a strong modulus of elasticity in the direction of fiber orientation, so even small variation in fiber orientation should affect their material behavior. Naturally, the operating conditions will also change from time to time. In the present analysis, a virtual material test is carried out by actually varying some of the conditions. The material response will be varied accordingly. The input-output relationship thus obtained a data mind to investigate the impact. Here is a brief introduction to the analysis process. First of all, a reasonable size for the unit cell was determined. This is necessary to minimize the influence of variations in the position of fibers. Despite the random arrangement of the fibers inside the actual microstructure, excessive periodicity of the microstructure is unintentionally taken into account if the unit cell is too small. So, virtual material tests were carried out with various unit cell sizes to explore the optimum size. Ideally, the randomness extends to infinity, so it is expected to asymptote to uh, certain true values as the uh, unit cell size is increased. This graph shows the results of measuring the macroscopic strength for different unit cell sizes. 
For each unit cell size, the position of the fiber was determined based on different random number sequences, and several analyses were carried out to verify the variability to the results as well. The results showed that the variation decreased after 26 micrometer, and the extent of the variation did not change with further increase in unit cell size. Based on these results, it was decided to adopt the unit cell size of 26 micrometer. The determined micro model conditions are then used to evaluate the macroscopic material response. For the present analysis, six different variation factors are set as shown in the table here. The three levels are given for each flutter. Those levels refer to the minimum, medium, and maximum values of each experimentally measured variation factor. If we were to set the analysis scenario with full factorial design, 729 different analyses would be required. This is too many amount of calculation. So a design of experiment based on the L36 orthogonal table was adapted to reduce the computational cost. In this analysis phase, the response surface model for macro young modulus and macro strengths are created from the analysis results of 36 patterns of variation factor combinations. This means that we have created reduced order model for determining the relationship between microstructure variation factors and material properties. The last step was to use the reduced order model to investigate the relationship between the large number of combinations of variation factors and material properties. The degree of variability was defined using the Weibull distribution for the strength factor and the Gaussian distribution for the other factors, as shown here. These variations were based on actual measurements made on several specimens. As the present analysis model has six variation factors, it is not possible to visually show the relationship between the variation factors and the output in the 2D or 3D graph. So the self-organized model, SOM for short, was used to visualize the correlation between inputs and outputs. Today, due to time constraints, only the results of the evaluation using the SOM model will be presented in the next year. Here are the results of the SOM representation of the relationship between the six variation factors and the modulus of elasticity and the strength of the UD composite. A detailed explanation of SOM is omitted, so if you are not familiar with the SOM, please refer to the reference mentioned at the bottom of the slide. The higher the similarity in the shape of the color distribution, the stronger the correlation between its parameters. Here, we focus on the position of points with high values in the output variables. For example, colored in red or any colors other than blue. Focusing on young modulus, we can see how large values are clustered in two locations as shown here. Checking the colors of the position for the input parameters, we can see that the same characteristics appear for young modulus and the fiber orientation angle. This shows that there is a strong correlation between the young modulus of the UD composite and the young modulus of lacing or fiber orientation angle. Now, we have investigated the strengths in the same way. The yellow circled area suggests the correlation between input and output. This means that material interface strength is an important factor. On the other hand, the strength of the lacing is not so important. This is probably because the fracture is initiated only at the material interface. Surprisingly, there is also some correlation with Poisson's ratio of the lacing. These trends can only be seen by visualizing large amount of data with some. The previous results showed that the strength of UD composite is strongly governed by the strength between the fiber and the lacing. So the properties of the material interface need to be carefully defined in order to predict the strength of composite accurately by virtual material testing. However, there is one problem here. I mean, there is no direct and accurate way to measure the properties of the material interface. This is the reason why the inverse analysis presentation here is needed. Several methods have been proposed for measuring material interfaces. Typical methods are listed here. 
uh, interlayer strengths of laminated composites can be measured by tests such as DCB. This problem is on the larger scale than the one we are focusing on here and is uh, therefore relatively easy to measure. On the other hand, several methods have been proposed to determine the strength between fiber and resin. For example, a method shown here is called the pull-out test, in which a single fiber is embedded in the resin and pulled out with a robotic arm. These methods unfortunately have a fatal problems. For one thing, these methods do not measure all the material parameters required for the analysis. The analysis requires strength in the normal and tangential directions of the material interface, but it is difficult to measure them separately. For another, the resin made for testing have a distinctly different history to the actual composite molding process. Even if stable experimental results are obtained, it is questionable whether these results can be applied to actual composite problems. I will now describe our proposed identification method. The analysis consists of three phases. The first step is training phase of AI. As in the previous example, a large number of combination of input information relating to the microstructure and output information are created. However, the input information here is an unknown material properties to be identified. In this case, this corresponds to the volume content of the fibers and the strength of the lacing and the interface strength in the normal and tangential directions. These unknown quantities are given randomly and the evaluation of the material response by virtual material testing is repeated. The unknown quantities here do not, of course, correspond to the true values. But it does not matter, because the objective is only to let AI run the input-output relationship. It should be noted that only the interface strength of the normal direction is expected to be highly sensitive under conditions where the material test is oriented only in the 90-degree direction with respect to the loading axis. Therefore, in addition to the 90-degree direction, off-axis tests inclined at 50 and 45 degrees were also carried out. Independently of this, realistic uniaxial tensile tests are also carried out on specimens with three fiber orientation angles, which is the same condition with first phase. The results here should be ideal output of the virtual material test. The AI, well trained in first phase, is then used to solve an inverse problem to find the combination of input parameters that can reproduce the material response obtained in the real material test. This should be the true material properties that was originally wanted to be known. This is the final validation phase. Using those material properties, virtual material tests are carried out again under the same boundary conditions. The macromaterial response obtained from this analysis is compared with the results of the real material test in the second phase to validate the material properties suggested by the AI. The results of each analysis phase are presented. The unknown material properties determined by the present approach are shown, as well as the results of the real and virtual material tests that were verified during the validation phase. The strength of the resin and the strength of the material interface are showing the same order of magnitude as those reported in previous studies and can be expected to output somewhat reasonable values. In fact, the results of validation phase show that the analysis results agree very well at, the, at all fiber orientation angles. This is the end of the analysis case study. As mentioned earlier, this analysis approach is not limited to the application for fiber reinforced plastic. If you have a problem that is difficult to measure directly in the real test, we hope that you will consider choosing this approach. Finally, here is information about EngineSoft, the organizer of this webinar. Multiscale business is in cooperation with EngineSoft. They have a wide sales network in Europe, North America, and the Middle East. Please contact them for more information if you belong to one of these countries. This is all of my presentation today. Thank you very much for your kindly attention.